What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Through Line Podcast. Uh, man, it's almost July. Next week is July 4th. Do you have plans? Are you making plans? 4th of July. You know what I'm doing this 4th of July? You may know this about me. I love goals. I love goals. I love making them. I love achieving them. And I guess I love not achieving them because I do that more than I do anything. That's the worst is you make goal lists and then you're like, I didn't do that. Then you got to look at the list and be like, God damn it, I didn't do that. I have goal lists from like, I like to make them the night before. It's not a goal list. It's like a to-do list for the next day. I like to do them, excuse me, end of the week for the next week. Again, what to do. And then month. Lately, I've been breaking down into four months. Like I have a four-month list of all these things I'm trying to accomplish. And I'm doing pretty good on that because at least you have time. But uh, one of the things I'm definitely going to do this 4th of July, I am making, because it's my favorite cake, a 4th of July cake. If you know it, you know it. And it's just a vanilla cake, you know, with Cool Whip topping, not frosting. I don't want frosting. I want Cool Whip topping with blueberries and strawberries to make the American flag. Oh, if I go to a 4th of July party and that's there, oh, it's going to be a cheat day. (laughs) It's going to be a cheat day. Eventually, I'm not going to have any cheat days. I can just do whatever I want. But right now, I'm going to have a cheat day. Um, So I'm looking forward to that. And that's something else I can do with my kids, whether we're in LA or out of LA. Are you going on a trip? Are you going on a vacation? Are you going to a lake? Who out there is going to a lake? Do me a favor. When this is posted, in the comment section, either on Instagram or on YouTube or on the iTunes page or on the face uh, the Facebook Throughline fan page, wherever it is, or on my Jay Larson Comedy fan page, tell me if you're at a lake. Just tell me where you are this 4th of July. That's all I want to know. Where are you this 4th of July? That's something I want to know. Lakes, oceans, rivers... Stream, I'll take a stream. Rivers and lakes are my two favorite. Oceans out there. Pool, I'll take a pool. Above ground pool, I'll take it. I'll take that above. I'll take that over an in-ground pool. Although an in-ground pool is going to be nice. I'm going to New York in July and we're going to have an in-ground pool. I see Connecticut, whatever. Uh, a lot of pool talk here. A lot of water talk. Um, so anyway... There will be a podcast next week, and it's going to be a good one uh, because I already recorded it. But I did want to say, um, have a great 4th of July. And I did want to say, uh, follow me at Jay Larson Comedy on Instagram and on Facebook. That's the new Facebook fan page, Jay Larson Comedy. Uh, Twitter, I'm on there as well. I'm not on there as much as I am everywhere else. I had mentioned some dates I do want to mention next week, uh, July uh, what is the date? Sorry, guys. If you're in Los Angeles, July 2nd, I am going to be doing a new hour of stand-up. New if you haven't seen me in a while. Um, newer if you've seen me within the last six months because it's stuff that I've been working on to put towards this new hour. So it's going to be the third um, in the belly room at the comedy store i'll have some funny friends there with me and uh, i would love you guys to come check it out it's going to be a lot of fun and i'm excited about it so come check me out on that um july 2nd eight o'clock p.m let's do that and then i'm coming out on the road sorry just looking for these dates right here i'm in naples florida on uh, marco island um at off the hook comedy club Is that the name of it? Can't remember. You know it if you're there. Uh, But I'm there August 15th, 16th, 17th, and 18th. So please, if you're in Naples or close to Naples, people have been saying for a long time, come to Florida, come to Florida. I'm coming. I'm coming, baby. Um, Then I am going to be in Hartford, Connecticut, November 7th, 8th, and 9th. And then I'll be at Laugh Boston, the 14th, 15th, and 16th of November. So that's Hartford, the 7th through the 9th. And then Boston, the 14th through the 16th. Coming home, baby. So come out to those. And then Vermont Comedy Club in Burlington, the 12th, 13th, and 14th of December. And then New Year's Eve, I will be in 
Portland at Helium doing two shows just one night. So that's the 31st, obviously, of December. I would love to ring in the new year with you. It's one of my favorite cities. I can't, all these cities, obviously, Boston, obviously, Portland, I talk about it all the time. And, um, Hartford's not bad. I've been there once before. Burlington, I love. Hartford, I, I, I was there a long time ago, and I and I enjoyed it. And I get to be on the East Coast in November. So uh, some more dates coming, I think. I'll let you know about those. Otherwise, um, check me out if in town, July 2nd, at the, Impro, at the Comedy Store. I will post it on Instagram and yada yada. So come check me out for those. Um, let's see. This week's guest fantastic 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 dude it's so funny i was like watching tv with the wife last night and he popped up on another he's got like so many so much going on uh he's on the show wrecked if you guys watch wrecked on tbs um and he's got this great like amazon campaign going and then like another one for like i think it's like hotel.com I, it, it, you just you're gonna see him like oh yeah i know that dude and we had a great chat I love this kid. I've, I've loved him ever since we like first connected through stand-up. And I'm um, stoked to have him on. Asif Ali. So please enjoy it. Give him a follow on social media. And um, you know check him out if your stand-up is in your town or near you. But uh, I hope you enjoy the episode. And uh, please enjoy a through line with Asif Ali. I'm right at the, the border now. It's like, do I get a giant whiteboard? Everyone productive I know has a giant whiteboard. I think it's good to... Uh, Visualize it. I have a whiteboard. I just have to see it. See, this is this is saying I like that goes, I don't know what I think till I hear what I say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think it's... I, I took it to mean... You ever see What the Bleep Do We Know? Yes. Okay. So it wasn't until I saw that I was like, oh, I get what that finally means. It yeah, means yeah. like... If you don't say words, the idea never existed because you never made. Once you say them, they ne- the idea then exists. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I always like you know when I moved to L.A., my mom gave me notepads that say uh, "Today in the Life of Jay Larson," "A Week in the Life of Jay Larson," "A Month in the Life of Jay Larson," and so since then, uh-huh. I have to every night I write out like my to do list for the next day. I have goals for the week, goals yeah. for the month, goals for the year. Now I've started doing like three month sections, so uh-huh. I'm like instead of like looking at the whole year, I look at it in like these three months. What am I trying to do? So this helps. Mm-hmm. And what happens sometimes is I'll put them up on a board. Excuse me, or on a piece of paper. Yeah, and then I don't look at that paper, and it, like I'll look at it two months later. I'm like, oh look, I did that, I did that, I did oh, that, wow. and I haven't even thought about them. I just like did them because they're on the paper. So it's almost like once you say it or, or write it or whatever, it's sort of like it occupies a different part of your brain that just like ideas don't anymore. Yeah, yeah. I think it just like gives it some focus. Sometimes I'll look at it, and I'm like, dude, what really? Fifty seven <laughs> goals this month. <laughs> And then I'll give myself like layups, you know what I mean? I'm like, yeah. uh, you know, get new sheets. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. And then I'll get them like, God, that feels good. It feels good. Sometimes yeah. I'll write down a thing after I've done it. Be like, oh, that could have been on the to-do. I'll write it and then cross it out. That's the funniest <laughs> thing ever. That's the best way to accomplish goals. Yeah, Do yeah, them, yeah. then be like, well, you know what? No. That counts. Yeah. <laughs> I got quarters. <laughs> totally. What, are you doing your laundry somewhere? Yeah, I'm doing my laundry. Yeah. Downstairs. I'm living in the apartment. I, I'm not crushing it yet. You I mean, I'm doing pretty it. well, but I feel like getting a house or a property is like, that's when you you know you've really like, yeah. you made you a choice. You own a piece of the earth. Yeah. You know what I mean? And this is a nice neighbor. This is a nice area. Yeah. I rent those. I don't own this. You don't own this? No. Oh, baby. We got it. Guys, hit up Guys. that Patreon. <laughs> Every one of you can give $30,000 a month. Step it up. <laughs> Imagine you just get four subscribers. You're like, guys, they're they're in the poor house. I'm killing it. You know, as much as comedians like to make fun of rich people, somebody needs to start a podcast that's like just praising multinational corporations yeah. and just horrible people just to see how different the Patreon would be. 
And they're like, oh, finally, a podcast that's nice to bankers. I think it would be just nice to have rich, only rich people on your podcast. And like, we just right. have rich people because you'd find out. You're like, wow, these... How do you live? What are you able I, to do? I remember when I was in Vegas, I saw... When were I, you there? I th- oh, this was a long time ago, maybe like five, six years ago. Mm-hmm. And Seinfeld was doing like the Coliseum thing that he does. He'll come in and make a million dollars and leave. And I was like, okay, my family was like, we're going to go eat dinner. And I was like, all right, if I see this, I'm going to try seeing this show. But if I don't make it, if I can't get a ticket, I'll see you guys at dinner. If I'm not, I'll see you afterwards. And they're like, okay, fine. And I went and I was just hanging outside, you know, and people were like coming out and like, does anyone want to buy a, a Seinfeld ticket? And and I waited for a while and people were like trying to sell them before the show. And that's when it's always astronomical. Yeah. And you then I was, like, I was like, you know what? I'll wait till, till his opener. I was like, I know how this works. I'll give him about 15 minutes. And then, and then this dude came out, this kid came out. And he's his like, millionaire opener? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, hey, does anyone want a ticket? And I go, yeah. And I go, how much? And they're like, I don't know, like 60 bucks. And I was like, I'll give you 40. And he goes, <laughs> he goes all right, whatever. You know when like, you, they can't haggle with you anymore? And they're like, all right. I don't even have time to call you fucking cheap yeah so just take it he's just hearing an applause break inside yeah (laughs) fine 40 and so i give him the cash and i go inside and i didn't know this but i sat down and there's a lady next to me and then this girl and then him and i didn't realize that i was taking the place of their father oh my god (laughs) so Uh... i was their dad sitting watching seinfeld with them and i was like then I was like, oh, shit. Now this feels like very weird. Like I'm yeah. sitting there. But the show was great. But the whole time I was looking at the audience, I'm like, everyone is rich here. These tickets are so expensive. It's super expensive. But don't forget, when people go to Vegas, they go to spend money. Right. And like my wife and I are planning vacations right now for the summer. And mm-hmm. I'm like, look at all this money we're going to spend. You know, we're looking at Airbnbs, rental cars, because like yeah. we got to travel to vacation. You, uh-huh. We're going to go see family. Right. When you move away from your family, you, and then you're just like... I looked at him like, well, what are you going to do? You want to stay at my mom's house? You know what I mean? No offense, mom. <laughs> but like you want to like, you want to have, you want to enjoy it. And uh, that's what people do. And you guys are going, you're East Coast, right? Mm-hmm. So you guys are all flying over there mm-hmm. instead of, because I know some people who will do the thing of like, I'll get my, get the family to go to, to Mexico or something and yeah. we'll all meet you there. Yeah. They're not having that? No, because we're going to see my wife's sister and her brother, and they oh. all have kids, and then maybe we'll see, we're going to see her folks, and we like to experience the place where we used to live, Yeah, and like take our kids to farm stands, and like, yeah. you know, go for hikes through the woods, and right. and go swimming in lakes. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? yeah, yeah. I'm not a huge resort guy. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, the cool thing about <laughs> The cool thing about Airbnb, though, is like, you can just like, uh, I went to Tulum, and it's just like, you just get someone's apartment oh, yeah yeah in the middle of the thing resorts are weird yeah i, I haven't i don't think i've ever done a res- we did a resort for a friend's wedding mm-hmm. but it was in like um <sighs> turks and caicos and like yeah. everything there it seems a little third world anyway you yeah. know what i mean so i was just like i don't know <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if this is a great thing it's also weird when you go over there and if you're in a resort, like we had to do this promo thing for Wrecked, and they yeah, took so us. Yeah, so where do you shoot Wrecked? You shoot in Fiji, we, right? Yeah, we did the first season in Puerto Rico, second and third was in Fiji. Now it's done, unfortunately, but what the greatest job of all time. I mean, as a single guy. I mean, I, with no just, kids. Just like with not having children and, and shooting over there. I don't even have a dog. So it's like, I'm just I had like, a fish and I had to let him go. I had to let him go. <laughs> and you're gone for like 10 weeks and you're like, this is the greatest gig of all time. That's it? It was only 10 weeks? 10 weeks. An episode a week. <laughs> in Puerto Rico and then in Fiji? And then in Fiji. But Fiji, my buddy goes there a lot for like, he produces surf events and he, it's like, isn't it like a thousand little islands? Yeah, it's a lot of little islands, but there's a main one that every, that most people live on. The entire population of Fiji is like a million maybe? Yeah. So it's like so expansive and like just open. What would you do in days off? Um, we would go where we were, our hotel. We There was like a dock where you could just take a boat. And in 20 minutes, you would be at a place where your buddy probably runs a lot of surf events, which is, it's called Cloud Break. Mm-hmm. And it's like a, like a world-class surf break. So we'd go out there and just watch dudes just like taking 
15 foot waves yeah is that the one where like because he used to have this they had like cement pillars out in the middle of the water and there'd and be a like judge's a little, stand yeah so he's I showing mean, me videos of them trying to load load camera gear off the boat onto that and we the boat's getting like crush, yeah crush. i'm like this is crazy it's crazy dude. people take jet skis there'd be like a little island where it would have a small hotel with like uh maybe 15 20 rooms on it mm-hmm. and it would be booked out all year round yeah because people would come to surf there and they'd literally come there and then it would be maybe two three minutes on a little jet ski or whatever and they'd take you out there and they just hit it all these dudes look like leather because <laughs> yeah. they're just like in the sun all day all day but they're just like so i've never seen people look so content and happy in their I mean, life there's something about doing sports in nature you know what i mean like and i know don't get on me about this i know but i know i know i golf yeah and yeah, like, yeah 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 part of it is just being outdoors you know mm-hmm. like surfing is much more of a sport and athletic than yeah than golf but at least yeah. in golf I, like i get to be outside and like i get to like i as much as i can if we have to wait i sit on grass i'm like i'm gonna sit on grass it's not bad you ever go somewhere and they have a lawn and you walk across the lawn people are like i just can you w- sit off the grass and i always Why? go no this but, is why it's here. They should have a rule where it's like, if you're going to walk on the grass, take your shoes off. Yeah. So if you're going to enjoy it, fully enjoy, enjoy it. Yeah. <laughs> Rub your toes in yeah, it. Yeah. But the surfing thing was that. It's like, these dudes so were going out. Up? Oh, absolutely not. I was seeing these people and I was like, who am I to think that in 10 weeks, I'm like an okay swimmer. Yeah. And there was no way I was going to oh, be yeah. like, oh, let's get on a board and risk it all. Because it's not like any other thing where if something happens, you know, if I roll my ankle playing basketball, I'm just on the ground. If you're surfing, the the tide will take you. Yeah. And that's just, the, that was the end of us if we didn't see him anymore. I have to resort to these people that, these poor people that have to take these idiots out on these boats every day. And... They're like, oh, he's going to risk his life to save me? No way. I was like, I don't want to do this to this guy, you know? He's like, lost another one! Yeah, yeah, sorry. <laughs> it was his fault. And so it was really exciting to see these dudes, like, battling nature in a way that even if they're doing well at it, these dudes would come out with fucking scrapes on their... Yeah, people don't understand. In surfing, you're not just like... It's not just the endurance to get out there. It's not just being able to get up on the board, yeah. which is so goddamn so tough. Hard. Then balancing and surfing, and then getting dumped into a rolling wave yeah. that is so powerful. It's then the chances that there's coral down there, there's so rocks down there. Cloud break is um, unique because the coral is there, and then it drops off. So it's in the middle of the ocean. So and the, that's what creates the break. So the wave hits it so hard. So if you mess up, the coral, I mean, you felt coral. It's all like little knives. Coral is all just the sharpest, yeah, it's hardest thing. So these dudes who are actually professionals, who are very good at it, they still come up all cut up. Yeah. Because that's just a na- the nature of what it is. And, I'm all and, set. And I'm just like, I'm okay. I'll just watch. I'll watch this. It's fine. But outside of that, we would do that. There's like all these beautiful nature things you could go hiking and stuff. There's these waterfalls, um, and yeah, you swim a lot in of the waterfalls. Yeah, yeah, you could do that. Yeah, you could do that. And then there's just beautiful beaches that you can just hang out in. And it, I mean, it was the most amazing adventure uh, uh, of my life. And I'm glad I did it then, and not like you know when I get married and have kids and stuff. Because then there were a couple people who had kids, and it's tough. Yeah, I you know. know how hard it is. Like if you go, like let's say you go on the road and it's like somewhere amazing. And you're talking to your wife and the kids. You can't be like, I'm having the greatest time here because I have so much free time and I'm waking oh, yeah. up and she'll be like, why? I know you are, but just don't tell me. No, usually it's like if I want to even share that because at the same, <laughs> you know, on social media, we only share highlights. We're only not highlights. Lowlights. Yeah, yeah. So like when I'm, when I'm, and there's also this thing in, in our business, I feel like, and I don't know if this is like this. It's like this in any relationship mm-hmm. with friends. <laughs> if you have someone that's crushing, you either feel weird telling them when you're not crushing. Right. You know what I mean? Like, they can't hit you up and be like, what up? How are you? And you can't be like, I don't know, man. I just don't know what's going on. <laughs> you can't do that because then they're going to be like, oh, they don't They don't want to talk to you. No. So, like, there have been times when I'm, like, on the road and, like, I'll you know, call my wife and she'll be like, what's going on? And I will have like slept in, gone out to a cool breakfast where I could sit and read right. and not have to worry about it. And as I started telling, she'll be like, just get off of that. Just don't, don't stand on it. You're gonna... <laughs> no, no. 
<laughs> River has been unbelievable. And you're yeah, just yeah. like, oh, okay, like right. I'll just tuck this away from me. <laughs> yeah. And and it's not like I uh, want it just for me. I want to share and be like, oh, this is so fun. Yeah. Like I literally just worked up the courage to ask my wife. I'm like, I just want to go away for a day by myself. Yeah. I go, I just want to take the computer. I want to swim. I want to write. I want to yeah. swim, write, swim, uh-huh. write, go to lunch, swim, write, swim, write, yeah. go to dinner, swim, write, swim, write, uh-huh. have a cigar next to a fire, go to bed at 10, wake up the next morning, come home. Yeah. And I like took me three weeks to ask. To just get the courage. Just to get the courage. And I'm going to be working the whole time. And I asked her and she goes, yeah, all right, yeah, go ahead. And I was like, really? And she's like, yeah. I'm like, good. I just booked the room. It was next Wednesday. Oh, hi. <laughs> That's so awesome. Yeah, I can't wait. Have you been to... um. Uh, oh, what the hell is it called? Um, Idlewild. It's so great that you asked that. Um, I've been researching, so we're like trying to find like a four day weekend where mm-hmm. we can do something in July, and we yeah. usually go up to Northern California. Yeah, but I want to go to Idlewild because mm-hmm. I just heard great things about it's it. So nice. You've been? Yeah, it's a little mountain town. Yeah, right. But it's not like a like bougie. It's like old school, right? Old and it's school. It's like throwback, like a frame cabins. It's not even that far from here. Two hours. Two hours. It's not north though, right? Is it south? Uh, no, yeah, it's like, you have to drive, um, sort of east and then a little bit north. Okay, yeah. Um, but it's so nice, and... Is there a downtown area? Yeah, it's yeah. like really cute. There's like a little Italian... There's no there's skiing like, there. It's like a little rest... No, 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 yeah. no, not really. There's like a lot of really good hiking. Yeah. Um, a lot of like gigantic, just... You know when you go into a forest and like the trees are so big... That you were just like, oh, this is so nice. Going to a forest? Yeah. What are you, Robin Hood? Who I'm goes going, in a forest? I'm going in there for the hike. I'm doing it. Are there angels in there? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's so amazing. Because you never do that here. We're all just so... A lot of LA the is like... here are different. It's not like yeah. green hikes, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of being on the internet is like, I'm the biggest person in the world. Yeah. And then it's just nice to be like, oh, there's no service. Yeah. It's nothing. just nice to get away. And you just see people in downtown like grabbing grabbing like groceries and they're just like yeah they don't care who anyone is no 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 no. yeah no, no. i've been looking at that town because i i always am looking for small towns that remind me of the east coast yeah you know what i mean and then like we start like we would go to ohi all the time and then we're just like oh this is like this isn't it because yeah. at first we're like it's it you know and yeah. i still like going up there mm-hmm. but like that's why we always i want something quiet yeah and something chill something nice and quiet and just like cozy we yeah. stayed in this like little Uh, this like little bed and breakfast thing and they had like these um, little rooms and they all had like skylights in them. Oh, dude, skylights. So like you'd wake up and we went in the winter time and it was like snowing a little bit. Yeah. And I was like, oh, this is nice. Nothing's better than a skylight. There's nothing better than being in the snow when you don't have a time commitment. Dude, there's nothing better than being anywhere when you don't have a time commitment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can just be like, what are we gonna do? I don't know. It doesn't matter. We could do whatever we want. You can do whatever you want. Yeah, but like for me, I loved, like when I lived in Chicago, I really liked the snow and all that up until it's like, oh, you have to be up, you have to be somewhere at seven o'clock in the morning. Yeah. I was like, I don't want to do this There's nothing better than being (laughs) able to be home on a snowy day. The greatest. And your kitchen's stocked. Yes. That's what you want. Just like looking out the window. And yeah. just loving did it. Did you have a yeah. fireplace? Have you ever had a fireplace? I have one. I, I I did have one. We never really used it that much. Well, in Arizona. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then here, my apartment has one, but I'm like, I'm so mad at the fact that LA apartments have fireplaces. Cause I'm like, this is a waste of square footage. It ruins <laughs> the living room. There's like, there's so many normal things I could have done. And then you're like, oh, I have to accommodate this dumb this rectangle area. thing. Yeah. And it's like, I'm, I never used it, and I'm never going to use it, because it's never beyond a jacket. Yeah. Well, we ha- I used to live at the beach, and we had one, and we in the winter, we had well, a fire every yeah, night, yeah, yeah. and it was unbelievable. Come, we would walk to the beach, uh-huh. smoke a joint, yeah. watch the sun go down, come back to the house, light a fire, and it was like, you know, That's four, nice if you're by the beach. It degrees. gets colder by the beach, yeah, though. Yeah, it's the best, dude. I love fires, man. Did you... Were you surfing and stuff? No. Dude, I surfed one time uh-huh. in Sandy. I've, no, that's wrong. I've surfed three times. Mm-hmm. I stopped surfing when in San Diego, I paddled out, paddled out, paddled out. Like it was exhausting. I finally got there, got on my bat board, turned the board around, and I was like, "All right." You know, I was when, with my buddy who's really good, 
And then all of a sudden, from the beach, I just hear, please stay within the surfing area. <laughs> and, like, I had drifted so much. I'm in, like, the swim area the now. The ocean's going to take you. And I was like, you know what? Fuck this. this is, there's a reason why everybody who surfs has an incredible body. Yeah. You need all of it. it these aren't accidents. It's core at its core. It's, it's all, Yeah, that's all it is. So, like, even when we would see people who are, like... In their late fifties, surfing, they were all ripped up, and it wasn't even because they were trying to be. They just have to have that, otherwise, you cannot surf. Of course, and it's a total lifestyle. Those people are totally cool eating tuna out of a can for they lunch. They don't care because they're getting a wave, dude. That wave is like drugs for them. I remember asking this dude because he would center his whole year. He would work. He lived in Australia. He would work, and then all of his vacations were around surfing, and he would drag his family with him. Killer. And I can't imagine that his family's like, God damn it. Like, we have to go to another thing with dad. But they can't really complain because it's like, it's still like a beach day. Yeah. It's just you're never going to see dad because for all of the day that the sun is out, he is out dominating waves. And then he comes back. Like, hey, look at dad. Which one's dad? <laughs> and he's the one getting pulled down by that shark right yeah, there. Yeah, see yeah, that, yeah, yeah, See yeah. that guy's half yeah. leg? <laughs> but he's just, they're all so fucking enthusiastic but that's when kids like i'm at that this weird place i'm like i don't know do i like take my passions and put them on my kids like because yeah. there are some families that they were just like hey we're a rock climbing family you're gonna rock climb yeah. and then kids take it on they become passionate mm -hmm. and i just like i don't know why i'm just like nah like i'm a i was a sports freak as a kid yeah and i'm like yeah i have my kids i'm like that yeah, will do baseball and you want to try ice skating you want to do ballet cool but i'm not like Oh, you do spring ball, fall ball, we watch baseball, we yeah. talk about... I'm like, whatever. I want them to kind of find their own way. And then I, I just never know what's right and what's wrong or what's what could be. You know, like you're like, yeah. oh, well, if Tiger Woods' dad never, never pressed golf on him, would he be Tiger Woods? Absolutely not. I think 100%. Really? Welcome to agree to disagree. <laughs> I don't think so. Only because, like, I played tennis in high school because I couldn't play basketball. My number one dream is to play basketball, and I just never grew. Yeah. So I, that was the most you to this handle? day, the most. Yeah, but I'm the most, uh, like, the most heartbreaking that ever happened to me was getting rejected three times to play basketball. And would you try out for, uh, yeah, middle school and then high school, and I was just like, everyone's getting taller. I'm staying the same. I, it, it, and I went to like a regular inner city school, or whatever. So it's like if I went to a private school, maybe yeah. I would have a chance because these kids would be like. But little, could you little, rain threes? Little weasel. No, I mean I was pretty decent, but I was my gift was more of like I would give a thousand percent. I would Always. be diving, getting rebounds, going for steals. I was very good at passing. Um, I was like a good point guard. I was a very good point guard, but it was just like it's like sorry, dude. There's a kid that's seven inches taller than you yeah. and it's like if you're a middle school coach you have nothing to live for and you're like i'm just trying to make this team not be zero totally. for 32 this season how tall are you uh five seven five seven yeah i mean how many dudes in the nba have ever been five two spud webb mugsy mugsy earl boykins earl boykins nate robinson, nate robinson four robinson. that's it and i know and they can all sky <laughs> and first of all they can also all bench 250 pounds easy yeah it's my my friend would be like oh yeah you know there's like some short basketball players and i was like yeah i don't think i'm the same dude nate robinson he was on the celtics for a while yeah and spud webb won a dunk contest nate robinson won a dunk contest can you imagine he? being i can't i still can't imagine being my height or shorter and running and getting such high jump that i can dunk with style not like a Oh, I barely yeah. got it in. I can dunk, dunk. No. I cannot. I, I can cannot. do shit on the way up to dunk. Uh, yeah, yeah. Under my legs, behind. I, I, that to me, I was like, okay, well, this is not This is not for me. I, I, this is a side. I, I want to do a thing where I get only jerseys of people who are short basketball players. Of course. <laughs> Why wouldn't you? Like, you what? know what? It's the converse of, I used to have this thing. I'm like, nothing gave me more happiness than when I saw a black guy wearing like a Larry Bird shirt. Oh, like, yeah. Oh, what's up, dude? Yeah, you know yeah, I mean? yeah, 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 yeah. It's like the greatest feeling in the world. Like, you're down with LB? Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you're, the, you're the converse of it. You're like, yeah. nope, these no, are no, no. my dudes. The people who have struggled. Like, I have a Steve Nash jersey. He's six feet tall. But in the NBA, it's like, this little guy, is he ever going to make it? Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> but when I was playing tennis in high school, 
a lot of the people um, that were really, really good, I remember being like, and it was the inverse. The kids at private schools in tennis were the nasty. ones that were dominating. Of course. Because to be that good, you have to start taking lessons when you're like a child. Yeah. And that's literally the through line of every single great tennis player that's ever played. They all start when they're little and they take lessons. And by the time they're like 15, 16, they're already in like amateur pro. Yeah. And then by the time they're in their 20s, they're already in like deep into the pros. So that's the only like agree to disagree about that is like if Roger Federer decided he wanted to play tennis when he was 13, he's already almost 10 years behind no kidding. everybody else talent wise and skill wise. Yeah. And like all those years of like learning all the angles and, and, and learning how to hit and return and serve serve is so hard to do yeah like i still barely know how to do it yeah and it's then serve so, with spin hit to the back corner hit down the middle hit all those corners and do all that it's like do you think the williams sisters would be that good if their dad was like all right you're 16 let's learn how to play tennis yeah no i'm not saying that i'm saying yeah. like they didn't just say hey let's learn how to play they're like you're gonna do this every single day and grind at it i think what it was is like half half i think you're someone in your family has to know that like this is a thing you can do. And you have to want it. Yeah. And then they go, hey, if you put the time into this, you can be really, really good because you already have natural gifts towards this. So someone needs to like see that in you yeah. and go, okay, now you're just doing this. You don't really have a say. You're doing this because I see before you can see it yeah. that you're going to be really, really good at this. What do you think the percentages of people that have been brought up that way that succeeded and versus the amount that have been brought up that way and got into drugs can't stand their family oh, yeah. and have never found love well Andre Agassi he he cr crumbled he, he crumbled because he was doing so many drugs and all that but still but, made it but he still had the talent and he was still good at tennis but yeah he couldn't handle it and it. I mean these are all grueling things like to actually be that good yeah it, it sucks. Your whole life is just doing that. People don't realize that. They think there's very few people that can like, you know, like I've talked about it like Kevin Hart, I love to death. Yeah. I think he's so funny in everything. Right. But, and then I'm like, and he always puts a picture of his family on Instagram and I'm like, yeah, how often do you even see them, bro? He does not see them. How You never see them. He probably sees them... And I'm not saying that's bad because he's – and it's like at what point do you give up your dreams or your wants because mm -hmm. you want to give to them? And it's – everyone's got a different definition of what family is, what goals are, what success is, you he know? He probably sees them like, okay, I make a thing where I see you guys. You guys have to come to me a lot of the time. A lot of time. Like I'll have to fly you to come see me and then I'll try as much as I can to shoot things. On average, I say 10 days a week – a month. 120 days a year. Of like an actual full day with my family? Easy. Yeah. Maybe. I would say it's probably less than that. Yeah. Of a full day. For he what could probably do like does. a half day, like see them in the morning. I might drop them off at school. And no. Then I, <laughs> I don't think he's ever dropped them You don't off think he's school. ever dropped them off at school? I mean, maybe. But I think he probably has someone that they have some. I of mean, course. dude, that guy, it's not like he just does a. Uh, how many TV shows that guy have? And he's movies, on one, two, three. He podcast, does, commercials. Yeah. He's got his own app. He does a YouTube thing. I mean, it's I mean, insane. It's like, dude, how much money do you need? How many ideas can you have? I don't think it's that. I think his drive is like, um, I'm going to do everything. Literally anything that I think of, I'm going to do it. Yeah. And I, I think that's just... And I think it's also like, I think his drive is... It seems to me his drive is like, everybody told me I couldn't do anything, so I'm going to show you that I can do everything. Yeah. Yeah. Like, they probably never told him, like, hey, you can't even be a lead on a show. And he's like, I'm going to be a lead on every show. <laughs> I'm going to be a lead I'm, on every show. I'm just waiting for him to be, like, to get to a point where he where he demands to be on other shows. I want him, I, if I was Kevin Hart, I'd be like, put me in Narcos. And they're like, well, we, you can't fit. <laughs> and he goes, I'm Kevin Hart. Do you want me to do a campaign where I say Narcos sucks? And they go... All right, okay, we'll fucking okay. put you in Narcos. Put a mustache on him and put him in the back. He's like, I want one good scene. I would do that. Put me, give me one scene Dude, in Aaron everything. Aaron Rodgers got in Game of Thrones. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Ed Sheeran was on it. So it's like, that to me would be a really funny thing if he was just like, how many guest stars can I do? I mean, guest one? stars with Kevin Hart. That would be the show. <laughs> How'd you get, to, I mean, he was like, yeah. He goes, I'm not just doing the guest stars. I want a show called Guest Stars yeah. with Kevin Hart. <laughs> 
where each week I talk about how I blackmail another show into letting me be on it. I mean, <laughs> and he would do it. And, and they would, would want him to be on it. Yeah, I mean, or they wouldn't have a choice. Right. So, yeah, so the thing of that is, like, I just feel like if the percentage is, I mean, we're talking about, if we're talking about top 10, obviously the percentage of success to, to failure is probably really, really high uh, in, in uh, as far as failure. failure. But if you're talking of the kids that are, are actually naturally talented and inclined to doing well in that sport and don't this get injured. This is also certain sports because you see guys like, uh, you know, the Greek freak, dude. That guy didn't start playing basketball right. until he was like 14. But that's like, people were like, what? Do you want to do whatever you want to do? You could probably like, yeah, do. like a Tim Duncan and people like that, or people who play, pick it up late. But basketball is different because basketball is. I've heard that if you play basketball early, it's actually not great. You fade out. No, not that you fade out, but a lot of people will pick up street ball things that don't translate to the NBA. That's why a lot of the coaches, like when you go from college to the NBA, it becomes this little window because you have yeah. to like unlearn a, a lot bad of things, habits, yeah. a lot of bad habits. So people like a Tim Duncan and Giannis and these types of people, they love people like that because you're like, you're naturally like incredibly athletically talented. So let's just take what you do and I can put these, I can just start at pure fundamentals so like tim duncan doesn't know how to do anything that's not exactly what works in the nba that's why they love that guy yeah no kidding he would never be like hey i'm gonna try doing an and one mixtape move on you because he, <laughs> he never knew what to do and that's why jay williams everybody was like god everybody wanted him to be the greatest yes and that's why rondo rondo was almost he was almost like the combination those yeah a couple years in boston where you were like Oh, yeah, he can't shoot, but he can still drop 20 a game if he needed to. Yes. And he's going to run the floor. Mm -hmm. He can re He was doing every And he's still, like, you know. He's still great. He is. Yeah. He is. He can turn it's it just, on. You want those dudes. Those guys that can, like, bring that street ball yeah. element to the NBA, you're like, yeah. It's that attitude of, like. It's that dude, baby. You know it's like I mean? how you world in here today, man. <laughs> you need that the attitude Japanese when you watch denim, son. <laughs> So yeah, I, I have you ever seen tennis? Like professional tennis played? Yeah, I think I, I went to Indian Wells once. I went to Indian Wells also, and I went to a tournament in uh, Massachusetts once. I yeah. didn't see anybody like insane. The great thing that yeah. I love about tennis, it's also what I love about golf, is that you can wa you can go play the sport. Yeah, just the way they play it. Mm -hmm. Like like you can't go play a professional basketball game, right? Or a professional baseball game. But like I could, you and I could go play tennis right now, mm -hmm. and we get a grasp. You know, yeah. With golf, you can go play courses that pros play from mm -hmm. the tips and be like, oh, okay, this is what they're up against. Yeah, and then see what you score. Tennis, you can't play that, but you can see what they do, and you're just like, oh, I could never even the despair, the talent disparity between like Insane. one in ten, and then like. 11 to 100 is so vast. I saw, um, I think I saw Federer play a dude who was maybe ranked 15. Yeah. So I th at the time, I think Federer was like two versus 15. But he, like, is this Federer two like just starting out or like no, no, no. This was maybe dipped or like in his prime, but someone snuck into one because Federer lost. Yeah, I think I think like Djokovic uh, had snuck into one. So um, tennis is also like. It's not like it was... How old are you? 31. 31. All yeah. right. So when I was growing up, it was like Ivan Lendl, Stefan, Stefan Edberg, John McEnroe, okay, Agassi, yeah, yeah, Michael yeah. Chang. Yeah. And like every now and then, someone different would win. Yeah. It wasn't until you got like Pete Sampras, Sampras yeah. and then Federer, yeah. Nadal, Djokovic. It's yeah. like there's four great guys and That's then everyone it. else is like, I don't know. Fighting for scraps. Yeah. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Andy Murray's like, but my right. ankle hurts. <laughs> and you're and like... like no one feels bad for you. <laughs> no one, dude. You kill it. So we'd see this guy who's one or two in the world playing a guy who's 15. That disparity in any other sport would not be that big. In this, it was astronomical. He made the guy look like he was playing a high schooler. The yeah. guy did not score on him. Maybe once he got one point. Yeah, the dude well, beat him in straight sets and it was like, 
What? I thought it just started and it was already You're over. Like, I just got a hot dog. What is Honestly, going on? Actually, it was, it was tennis. Yeah. I just got a lobster <laughs> roll. What is going on? Yeah, I just put my white linen suit jacket on. <laughs> this match is already over. Someone t- I read one time or someone told me or I heard on TV mm-hmm. that Federer used to take the first set to just like learn you. Mm, you know what I mean? Yeah. He would learn you. And then in the second set, he would prey on that weakness. And wow. then in the third set, he'd fuck around and try shit out. Really? <laughs> like, doing stand-up, you go out there, you're like, all right, let me just see what the crowd's all about. Yeah. All right, let me hit him with my A shit, and then let me try on some new stuff. And that, yeah. that's what he would be doing. Like, Because if you think of it, those first three rounds in like even majors for him are like... Yeah. Yeah, all right, dude. Whatever. I just got to get past you. Yeah. You know, like in the NBA, you could have upsets in the NCAA tournament, but in tennis... Because tennis you, is such a one, it's just you. Yeah. And it's straight up skill. Yeah. And, and, and athleticism. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? In golf, you can have an off day. You know, like Tiger could shoot a 78 in an opening round somewhere. That's why the fascinating thing to me about those guys in tennis now is that now they're getting older. So it's like now to see Federer trying to like truncate what you were just talking about yes. like he does he's like i can't figure you out for this long because i'm going to lose so i need to be able to figure you out in like the first two sets mm-hmm. and still be able to take the first and one then i have to take it easy on my body yeah so i don't get hurt because i'm I, 35 30 what how old is he 37 maybe 38 no but he's still super young and super just nasty and all my favorite thing about sports so no matter what the sport is is the great thing about sports is if you do it well, you get all of the right things at the right time. Like you get money. Oh yeah. At the right time, you get uh, fame. You, you get fame success. at the right time. You get success at, when you have time, right? So you get to enjoy everything while you have time. And then when you retire, you're thirty eight. You're thirty eight. And so you're you worth have, like a hundred million bucks. You have your whole life. They get to live two lives, so they sacrifice one life. I look at it like this: like, uh, you know, like Federer basically sacrificed one life like he did not have a childhood no you know he's just every day is just like eating chicken uh, with no dressing just salad no dressing just going working out you know doing all this uh you know he's basically a robot he has 50 doctors he he is a robot yeah and then and then when he retires then he'll be able to like be like oh okay now i have 45 years maybe more to just like they can just do it right. And then you look at dudes like Landry Fields. Do you know, remember mm-hmm, Landry mm-hmm, Fields mm-hmm, played for the Knicks? Mm-hmm. Dude went to Stanford, mm-hmm. went played in the NBA for five years, probably made like 23 million bucks, yeah. and then retired and probably had 8 million in the bank. Now he has a, probably a cool job somewhere, yeah. and he just lives. You know who I get the most jealous of athletics-wise are professional soccer players and any European athlete, because you're like, they'll be like, uh, uh, what was Ginobili's first name? Martin? Ma- Manu, 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 yeah, Manu Ginobili uh, yeah. from Argentina has a house in the south of France where yeah. he spends the off season. Where you're like, uh, Tim Duncan lives in <laughs> rural Minneapolis. You know what I mean? You're like these European dudes or South American dudes. Central, they like they're so global. You, they're global, yeah. bro. That's why I always look at the Toronto Raptors and I'm like, they should build that entire team around. Like European players, yes. because every, you think dudes that like grew up here. That's why, like Demar Derozan, when he went there, you see uh-huh. that thing recently. He's like, "Yeah, I built that team." Like he said that he was basically a like his trade out of there was yeah. like gave them the keys to do everything because of him. Prob- probably, it, yeah. Remember, yeah. dudes were like, "I don't want to go to Toronto." Nobody wanted like, to go to Toronto. Oh, really? This international city that's like fresh and people cool didn't want to go to Toronto because they were like. Yeah, people just people just don't travel in America, so they're like Canada. It's probably like sticks and leaves or whatever. And then, <laughs> and, and then also it's like it's also like uh, they're like, why would you go to Canada? They their team is like really good, but they can never. You forget that LeBron was just dem- demoralizing them every year, so people just automatically assumed that they were a trash team yeah. when they were basically they were winning the East every year, but would just get owned by this superhuman person. Yes. Um, and then, so that trade was like almost perfect timing because LeBron left and then now you get, you get Kawhi and Danny. Um, and that's but so exciting Danny to was see. was a throw in and he's just, I love watching But you that forget dude. how good yes. and useful, like everyone from the Spurs is like a utility player. Yeah. So it's like, if you have a superstar and you add in a utility player, it's like, 
everyone seems like almost like when people were playing with LeBron, like he would make people who were like, oh, this person would never get an extension. No kidding, look dude. Great. You think Luke Longley would ever be brought up in conversation if it wasn't for Michael Jordan? Unbelievable. And yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Get the fuck out of here. No yeah, one yeah. gave a shit about Luke Longley. Nobody cares. But he averaged 13 a game. All he did was allow you to Maybe get paid more than you should have gotten paid. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> Uh, so it's wait a, a minute. Yeah. Where are your parents from? My parents are from India. Both India. Of them. Yeah. And did they grow up here or did they? No, no, no. My both my parents grew up in in Hyderabad, India, and my dad came out. Is to... that a smaller city in India? Like there are no small cities. In I India. know. <laughs> I was gonna be like like population thirty eight million. <laughs> Um, no, it's a pretty, it's a pretty big city. It's like in the center, it's in the, it's in the center of the country and a, a little bit south. Okay. Um, but it's, it's huge, millions and millions of people. Um, and when, at, whenever I go, it's just like, um. Why did your what, parents come here? Uh, my, my dad's oldest brother, my uncle, um, came here first. And so to be the first person to come to America, you have to be an exceptional person. Mm-hmm. Right, so he was. He could dunk. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, he could dunk, and no, he was so smart. He became a doctor, and um, he, at that time, in he, India or in, yeah, in India, and then he came out here, and then furthered that, and like became a uh, a surgeon here. Um, it was so hard. Uh, and they were so poor that he would have to study. My dad loves bringing this up too when we were growing up. He's like, my brother used to study underneath the street lamp because we didn't have lights. Jesus. He would just sit underneath a lamp and be reading because that's how hard it was to like succeed, right? Yeah. So he was like, okay, I'm the oldest. All the pressure's on me because the way those families work is like, if we're not doing well, it's on you, dude. But I mean, You're is only it every chance. family's goal to get to America? Is that a goal or is it to get to anywhere else or was it just your family's goal? I think a lot of families that grow up in the third world in that kind of environment, what you want is for you know your family to to do better than they were doing previously and at the time um america was like that was seen as like you go here you can get a job you can pay get paid in dollars and you can help us all out and we won't be living you know in this little town just struggling yeah you know so it was seen almost like the nba of like okay if you're really really good at this you can get drafted to the America and then, and then you can crush it yeah. and you can bring us all over or you can send money back. Now wait, now is it that like that entire city is poor? All of or in, is it all of India is mostly poor. It's Even a if you're a doctor. people. No, 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 no. Like if you're a doctor, you're doing you're doing okay. Yeah. Um there is like now just recently in the past maybe you know, uh, probably 20 years because of tech and all that, they're starting to become a growing middle class. Um, but when my parents were growing up, it, you were just like very living a very simple life um, or you were like crushing it. Like yeah. the wealth disparity in India is pretty, pretty wide yeah. still. So you have people who are just like dominating it and then you have utter abject poverty. So like everybody else is just like, you're doing okay. You know, you're doing fine. And so my my dad and my mom were like, they were doing fine. They weren't like, you know, my dad was probably a little bit poorer than my mom when, when um, uh, as far as their respective childhoods. Um, but that wa- that's why, you know, um, if, if my uncle became a doctor in India versus becoming a doctor had- in America, it's like that the money disparity is so huge. It's like, you have to go for that. Yeah. You have to go for that. And that was like uh, in, you know, in the late 60s early 70s i think uh my uncle came out and uh this is how much he was trying to go for money he moved to he got a job in wisconsin and they're like we'll pay you more if you live in beaver dam yeah which is like an even smaller because you get paid more as a doctor if you live in a a smaller place so he did that and he honestly took one for the team it's like no one wants to move to a place where you don't know anybody and you don't you barely know the language and you learn it and then now you're working and you have to bring your family and like that's hard. Like, there's yeah. nobody around that you know, or you don't have anything in common with people, really. But, you know, people like you because you're the doctor, you know, yeah. and he's a nice guy and he's very good at his job. Um, but and, then you and have that. There's no comforts. You no. know, like, the, you, you can't get, you know, food that you're used to growing no. up in. Yeah. You know what I mean? You have to be in, like, a, you know, cosmopolitan oh, city right. in order where people are like. That's why you. it's always fun when you find, like, a. Uh, 
Did you know that in in southeast uh, Tucson yeah, is the, biggest, the highest population of oh, Filipino people in America? And you go, oh, cool. Um, yeah, so that's why a lot of that happens. Like they'll just glob on. Like that's why Chicago and like Jackson Heights. Like you'll find these places where it's like, oh, we live over there. Let's just all yeah. Then we'll know somebody. So, but my uncle was so into like I gotta be that anchor and so once he started working then you can sponsor people and so he started sponsoring uh and then eventually my dad got sponsored and then he got placed in detroit which in the 70s detroit you, so was you like get the placed. worst place you don't have a choice how does it go basically it's like you go where at that time um because i think detroit has the highest iraqi population in the yeah. United States. As far as like, that, well, that's different. That's more of like a refugee kind of yeah. thing of like, like when I was growing up in Arizona during the, um, the 90s, there was like that, uh, the conflict in, in Serbia mm -hmm. and Kosovo and all that. So we got a lot of like um, Serbians and Albanians and like there's all of a sudden one day there was just like a ton of them in yeah. our neighborhood and we're like, okay, there's like different white people and we're like, this is very cool. <laughs> You're like, huh. uh, so, yeah, so my dad came in the 70s, and he got placed in Detroit, and because he just got a job there, working at, like, a GM uh, factory, and he was also, like, a working, like, a line cook or whatever, and then he was going to uh, this community college, and then he got a job at Honeywell in Arizona, and they're like, you can work here if you want to live here, and he was like, he tried living in Chicago, he tried living in Wisconsin, but he was like, he hated the cold. Yeah. He was like, I, he's like, I refuse to live where it's cold. And because in always, India, it never snows unless you're living all the way up north. So it's like by the time he came to America, he was like in his 30s. He's like, I don't want to start. I don't want to start shoveling. Yeah, he's like, I'm not into this at all. So he was so happy to get that job. So he's living in Arizona. And then he went back to go get married to my mom because he got a job. And then my grandma on my dad's side was like, hey, you have a job. Uh, let's get you married. Come back home. He met my mom. And then it was like, uh, forever? Cool. And they just came That's to crazy. America and they're still married. But part of me thinks it's like, I don't know if they would have gotten married if if it was like a, hey, meet my mutual friend. Yeah. I don't, I don't know if that would have happened. What do you, what do you think, what, what do you mean? I don't think they have enough in common. Yeah, I, well... They have here in common, you know. I mean, well, I get, well they, part of it is trauma bonding, right? Like, if I told you, you know, mar get married, you and your wife, you may not know each other that well, but go to Vietnam and start a family, and you have to, you have to find a way to succeed, and you have to learn the language. Who else are you going to bond with? Yeah. <laughs> right? You're yeah. not going to be like, oh, screw this, I'm going to go to the bar. That's a real partner. Yeah. Yeah. You only have each other. And then you have the pressure of, like, I need to succeed because, like, you know... My family and all that. Yeah. It's a lot of pressure. That's tons. But I always feel like there's such... Uh, sounds like you guys have great family bonding. I don't, I yeah. don't, I don't see American families being like, I'm going to grow up and make money so I can take care of everybody else. Yeah. You I know think what part I mean? of it is like, in America, it's like, the good thing is like, hey, you can do whatever you want and you can be hyper independent and all that. And then the downside to that is like, everyone's in a rush to be like, um, I'm my own person. Yeah. And... To me, it seems like that thing is like, um, I move out when I'm 18 and I never talk to anybody and, uh, and I'll only see you during the holidays and like that kind of thing. And then there's this whole thing of like, even when you were mentioning like, do you want to, you, what do you want to stay with your mom? Yeah. It's like, if I went somewhere and be like, why, what do you mean? I have to stay with my mom. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like a whole different dynamic of like, um, you know, even when you get older, like you're you, it's just like a given like one of the siblings like the parents is going to be living with you guys yeah that's just a certain given i and i and i say to my wife all the time i'm like god i hope they don't move out when they're turned 21 <laughs> like i want them to like hang out like yeah. stay for a couple of years why not but hopefully we have enough space where like i don't have to see you all the time you know yeah, what I mean? yeah then yeah. you're like all right dude mm -hmm. you know what i mean like no now now be an adult yeah yeah, yeah. you get up and make breakfast but you know what's gonna happen realistically the way this country is going is like they're going to have loans and they're going to have to just, even if they are being independent and working and doing all that, like my brother, uh, one of my brothers is a pharmacist and he had so many loans that like after he finished pharmacy school, he had to go back and work and live in my parents' house yeah. for like two years just to, just to have some sort of a dent 
on these yeah, loans. I know. And any others, uh, you know, like 10 years ago, he'd be like, oh, no, I'm living by myself and I'm crushing it and I'm doing this and I'm doing that. But it's like now with loans, it's like in a weird way, you know, you guys are all going to experience the Asian family dynamic because kids are going to be crippled by college loans. <laughs> They're cri- and it's not like student loans are what they used to be. Like I graduated with student loans, but that's not when college was 55 grand a year. <gasps> to go to undergrad? Not only undergrad, dude, like state schools. I mean, like schools that before you like, I don't care about going there. Mm-hmm. Like I look at my college and I'm like, what? Yeah. You guys charge what? For what? For what? They should tear it like, okay. What kind of job are you going to be getting? Like, what is the the starting salary yeah. or the median salary of a job you're going to get? And they should adjust your tuition based off of that. A guy getting a liberal arts degree and a guy getting an engineering degree should not have to pay the same no. for a college. Because one guy is going to make $11 an hour. I mean. <laughs> Doing Airbnb experiences. And another guy's going to get paid like a hundred. Yeah. So it's like that that's doesn't... It doesn't matter. Some people go to school to become a cop. It's, you know what I mean? Yeah. You're going to be a policeman. You're like, okay, but you're going to spend <laughs> the same amount of money that someone... Yeah, that's insane. It's insanity. All right. So what I was going to ask, did you... Yeah. So how, did you go... Were you... Like, what was a family vacation growing up? Did you go uh, to we India? We couldn't afford to go to any... Um, um, cause like my, you can't travel. My dad got laid off of Honeywell, and then he, um, he was. Uh, my mom went to trade school because they just needed somebody to start making money, and so my dad was like dishwashing at the time when he got laid off because his job at Honeywell was building, um, computers when they're the size of refrigerators. Yeah, like the giant ones, Those and then personal IBM computers came out. Yeah. yeah. Then Japanese people were like, "Hey, we have these," and then we're like, "Oh, okay." My whole livelihood, <laughs> and then. Your dad was like, those aren't going to last. So my dad was super, always since he was a child, obsessed with animals, right? So his, like, you know, like if you're going to make a show like Cheers, right? Everybody hangs out at the bar. For him, his cool hangout was like pet stores. I'm being completely serious. His, <laughs> his, his fun hangout was, you know, he'd go to pet stores and, and talk to people who, you know, have animals and farms and stuff like that. And so all of his friends had something to do with animals, and he specifically loved birds. Like he was That's obsessed amazing. with birds. In the eastern part of the world, pigeons and stuff are like very popular. Yeah, America got introduced to it through like Mike Tyson, I think. And I'm all, I was just gonna say, like it's all, it still yeah. amazes me. Like, how did he train those birds to do that shit? Yeah. So, bas- I mean, that's a whole other thing, but that's been going on for. You know, hundreds if not thousands of years. You yeah. know, racing pigeons. That's been like a thing, and. So anyway, my dad was very into birds. One time he's hanging out with his friend. Uh, his friend goes, hey, you know, you can't, you know, they canceled smuggling. Like, you can't smuggle birds into America anymore or animals in general. They canceled it. Yeah, they nah, canceled they didn't it. pick it up, man. Yeah, yeah. And so my dad goes, ah, that's probably a good thing, right? You don't want people to bring in animals that don't need to be here, right? And he goes, so what are they doing with the ones that are here? Like that they catch or whatever. And he goes, oh, they're all quarantined in like Southern California or whatever. And he goes, so what are they going to do with them? Just raise them? And he goes, um, yeah, or they'll just like auction them off to people to just like take care of them, I guess. And my, and a normal person would be like, oh, cool story. I'll tell my family that at dinner. Uh huh. On to the next job search. He goes, uh, okay, so this is what my life is going to be. Oh, man. I'm going to take our savings, a huge chunk of it. I'm going to go buy a bunch of these birds. And then I'm going to come back, take them back to Arizona, and then I'm just going to start breeding and selling exotic birds for a living. <laughs> so he got our van, our old Chevy van, and um, he went and he bought a bunch of birds. He came back and he started like breeding and selling um, jungle birds in our backyard. In our backyard, we like built like this extra little house thing because Arizona is so hot. He built like this an second, atrium? yeah, and no, but it's like actually like the structure of an actual house. It had air conditioning and like windows and a gate because these birds are expensive, right? Yeah. And but initially, he did it like in our garage. He converted our garage into a thing. And my mom was like, "Get these birds out of my goddamn house right now!" And I mean, how he, loud was that garage? Oh my god, so loud! <laughs> and he just devoted his life to it. He 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 had been living off the grid essentially um for he started doing it in the it, i would say a good 10 years mm-hmm. he was completely off the grid making money yeah who am i going to report it to um 
just selling birds just buying it and this was it was perfect timing though because he didn't have a shop how did people even know about him the classifieds in the newspaper classifieds classifieds he'd call in and, and you, you know it'd be per letter <laughs> oh my god <laughs> and and sorry and so he would do that and this was in the 90s when bill clinton was president mm-hmm. so we were going through like a good time surplus like everybody was making money and everyone was doing good and this was that time period in american pop culture where everybody wanted every rich white person wanted well every rich person wanted like a monkey oh my god or remember like monkeys mike tyson had a tiger like people were just like everybody wanted like a weird jungle animal yeah and my dad was like i got these birds and people were obsessed with having these birds and did he rise raise prices with oh my god yes they were so expensive (laughs) and i had never met um, I had it was the first time I met someone who made money doing something in the arts. This lady came with her family, just like this regular, just soccer mom looking woman, and she dropped three grand on a baby bird. Uh, and, and African Grey Congo, they're like the best uh, talking birds. And my dad would always be like, "What do you do?" He'd be like, "What do you do for a living?" Because in his head, he's like, "How do you? How are people just dropping three grand on a bird?" And she goes, "Oh, I write country songs." Oh my god. So she would write country songs for like whatever the equivalent of like a Toby Keith or something and she's just making these monster ass checks. Yeah. And they all live like in Scottsdale or whatever in these giant mansions. The first time I saw a Porsche that in lady. my life was not that lady, it was a different guy who's who bought like two birds for like six five grand, I think. And the people were just like dumping cash. And and it was like very almost like narcos ish. And we were all outside. Me and my three brothers were like all outside his his Porsche. Like you know when like Michael Jackson would go to like Africa and kids yeah. would just be like running around. The loo. We would all just be like running around his Porsche and like looking in there and stuff. And uh, yeah, and anytime we we went to a guy's house, um, I forget what neighborhood. I think it was like I think it was Scottsdale, like North Scottsdale. He built a house that was so gigantic. It had obviously the 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 baller the baller notification of the the half circle driveway of course, with the us. Roman pillars, right? Yeah. And you park, and we took our shitty van. We parked. We were delivering also at the time, post mating birds, and <laughs> we went to the guy's house. And in his house, in the foyer, whatever, he had a gigantic like, I would say twenty by like a hundred foot high Aquarium. glass atrium Holy with like shit. a giant tree in there and everything yeah and and then he already had like one or two birds in there and then we put another one in there and i was like this is the most beautiful thing i've ever seen in my life it had like a skylight thing on the top it's like air conditioned now you see like this is the tackiest thing i've ever seen oh yeah life. yeah yeah at the time i was like oh my god now i'm like oh god this like people must People must have go- opened the door and be like, "Oh God, here we go. Yeah. This is this is what you did with your money." Like, Scarface. <laughs> truly, it was all Scarface. Yeah. So my dad did that for about eight to ten years, and then he got out of the market as it was like dipping. So I will give him that. He get knew when to get. Out. He knew when to get out of the bird market. <laughs> he saved up a bunch of money from that, and then he combined it with my mom's money, and he bought like some real estate stuff, and like so he's fine. Um, but my mom w- uh, became a respiratory therapist, and she did that for like twenty years. She's still doing it now, and it's basically like when you know kids are born prematurely, she like manages like their breathing and all that, like in a Jeez. little incubator. But she loves it; it's like the most fulfilling job for her. She even went to college because she never went to college proper. She wanted to have a college degree in America, so she was like, "What if I go to college and become a nurse?" And she went to college in- when she was like fifty-five. Yeah, she went to college, became a nurse, did it for like maybe a month or so and it wasn't working out because it was hard for her to like adjust to the fact that adults are just garbage yeah and she's like i don't like this wow and then she just went back to her (laughs) her old job (laughs) that she's still doing now my (laughs) mother-in-law went to college when she was older like after she retired she went back to school yeah and i would hike on her all the time i used to say to my wife i'm like could you just imagine showing up to class Friday morning at 8 a.m. and you're like hungover and you're spent and here's your mom like, I know the answer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're like, what is she doing I remember dropping my mom off at school and being like, oh, man. Oh, man, I I wish I could. I wish my mom would like introduce me to some of her. All of her friends were like the most attractive college girls I've ever seen in my life because they were like, 
what's more fun than this little woman uh, yeah this five foot woman with a with a backpack on mm-hmm. who already has a job who's the most enthusiastic person you'll ever meet a hundred percent and it's ready to go who doesn't want to hang out with that person yeah and they have to do you, have to, you know there were times when my mother-in-law had to like do projects with yeah. the kids they're like all right team up and she's like yeah this one guy's not pulling his weight i've told him, and he smokes and i've told him you can't be smoking <laughs> You My mom would bring smoking. snacks and stuff. Who doesn't want to hang out with yeah, that lady? Of course, she's the best. <laughs> Blaze a little weed. She yeah, yeah. With munchies. <laughs> because to, if you're cool enough, yeah, like your mom and my yeah. mother-in-law, to say, I don't care how old I am, I'm going back to college. You're going to be down. You're going to know what college kids are because you were that age at yeah. one point. So they're in there just being like, oh, I know they're probably high or I know they're, <laughs> you know, they were out drinking last night or they're irresponsible. They probably, and my mother-in-law, I don't know what yeah. your mom's like, but she does not have a filter. So she'll just yeah. say whatever she's thinking. Yeah, my mom would do the same. My yeah. mom, I remember, went up to one of my cousins and was just like, you got to lose weight. Like she would just say like, oh she's God. like straight up, you got, I'm worried about you. Because, That's you know, amazing. my, because my dad had diabetes and she's like, you know, it could cause a lot of health problems. Like straight up, like this could cause a lot, not like an aesthetic thing. That's literally I mean, like, you know, this can lead to like heart problems and other things. But then you're like, yeah, maybe say it when other people aren't around. Yeah. And then my mom would feel bad. Like, oh no, do you think they're mad at me? And I go, no, I don't think anyone's mad at you because you don't mean it that she's way. Like, Are you sure? Because they're crying yeah. right there. <laughs> <laughs> but it's funny. Like we can't. We, we've put such like an emphasis on uh, appearance, especially like yeah. weight, yeah. that we, you should be able to say like, hey, you know, like diabetes runs in the family. Yeah. You're clearly over the limit right now. Yeah, dude. And it's like, it should be, I, I, dude, I've recently lost some weight mm-hmm. and I've said before, like, where were any of my friends being like, yo, fat boy? Well, for you, they're probably like, this is good for comedy. Yeah. <laughs> That is very much true. But it's like people need, we need to stay on top of it because it's like, you know, more than anything, like, you know. It's just the way you say it. Like, I mean, because they know. If someone's overweight, they know, right? If someone's underweight, you know. And that's when people are like, hey, you are right. Like, what's up? Yeah. So then why wouldn't it be when someone's like vastly overweight? Yeah. It's just like a, a, you know, I, I don't know. But my mom's really good about being like, she got my dad to quit smoking. Because my dad, like, you know, back in those days, like, everybody was smoking. You'd smoke, like, a pack. And, and the birds were smoking. The birds yeah, were like, the birds were like, yo, this is great. <laughs> they were gambling in the back, yeah. And he, she got my dad uh, to quit smoking and, and her brothers to quit smoking. Um, so she's very much that person, like, yeah. everyone be healthy, take care of yourself. Um, just, like, hyper about that. But all of her friends in college were kind of, like, they were down with that. Of, like, her little group were, like, we take college seriously. Like there are that those people. Like yeah, man. Like we know how to have fun, but like we're also like trying to get a degree here. So she like kind of found a group that that like I mean, fit honestly, her vibe. At the which end, is great. Wait, did you go to college? I did. Yeah. Where'd you go? UIC, University of Illinois Chicago. Okay. Yeah. Because there's something awesome about like I always think back, and I was like, I was just kind of like going through the motions in college. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And I look back, and I'm like, man, if I had just like understood that, put the time in, yeah. work hard, play hard crush when you have something to do and then look at excuse me everything that the world has to offer you in college like when I go back now and I see kids that I can tell are grinding and doing it Mm -hmm. you're like oh yeah or like kids in college I knew who were like nah I got that paper done because we're doing that thing this weekend right we're gonna go like right getting ahead of it get get ahead of it like you could just crush so much well a lot of it I think is like I mean I dropped out two years in I was like I'm out I'm out of this uh, because I started like doing colleges or whatever but performing, also, doing stand up in college. Yeah, and I, and I just had lost the heart because when I went to college, I I knew in the back of my mind that I I I didn't really want to go to college. Yeah, but I was like, oh, I can go to Chicago though, and like I. But I felt so like what the hell did your parents say? Because if, oh, like, they were not into it. I can't imagine. They were not into it. They thought I was taking a break. Like, they probably still think I'm taking a break. <laughs> like, he's going to pop back in any day now. I told yeah, you, yeah. Rekt would get canceled. <laughs> I told you. So, um, so when I when I went over there, yeah, I, I just feel like a lot of, I mean, in my experience with public school is like, if you're going to like a city public school, you're not going to college with tools. Yeah. You're not going there. Like, my, all my cousins that went to like, nice public schools like in good neighborhoods that give a shit or I mean unfortunately like rich neighborhoods or or like private schools 
what they have over regular public school kids is like they get tools like they're like getting prepped for college right so they probably succeed a little bit better because of, you know the, the the classrooms are smaller and they're getting prepped as like you need to handle you need to be able to handle you all also, this they, you need to be able to grind because even in like dumpy public schools there's still going to be ap classes there's still right. going to be stuff like that so yeah if you can get on that grind and dude my niece is like baller smart yeah and like active does extra crooked activities yeah. and bro she couldn't get into schools that my friends got into that and my friends are we're all right you know and it's, it's just gotten so it's competitive hard that like competitive. you have got to be the cream of the crop to get into the good schools and you have to really want it like i i should have just taken the time to be like if if I had that kind of you know I'm canceling everything and because at that time I got so obsessed with comedy that I I couldn't really focus on it. Were you doing sketch? <laughs> you doing stand up? I was improv? doing stand up. I was doing uh, I was doing improv and mostly stand up though because pretty early on I was like there's no money in improv and I was like I want to do this for a living so yeah. it's like how am I gonna you know? And, I mean I can't believe you knew all that. I didn't even know you could do this until I moved here really yeah i was i was like so obsessed uh with it and 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 so oh and so when I, the, the real reason i quit is because so when i was doing these shows around town uh in chicago in chicago my brother was also living in chicago and he's working at uh at a finance company and he you know he's really good at talking and and you know his whole thing was like he would have to deal with international people and stuff but it was like a grueling job. He'd be like sleeping under his desk sometimes, you know, because it's his first year or so yeah. there, you know. He'd be wearing like these baggy ass suits that, you know what I mean? He just looked like a small kid yeah. wearing his dad's suit at a company. <laughs> and But the definition of grinding, like doing all the work, getting it done. Um, and I was going to school. I was doing it, but I was like, my mind wasn't in it, you know? Yeah. And... And I, and I was just so obsessed with doing stand-up that I would do these shows. And my brother, I remember asking me, like, how are you making money? Like, what is the... How do people, how do stand-up comedians make money? And I go, well, I mean, if you get, like, a, a spot at the club or whatever, you'll get, like, you know, 50 bucks or whatever. If you, like, mm -hmm. if you like host for the weekend or if you feature, you might get a little bit more than that, blah, blah, blah. Um, then you go around and, and you know, you, you, you're try, always trying to get a tape, you know, get a good tape. You might be able to do like a late night or something like that if they yeah. come into town. And he was like, um, uh, he was like, why don't you do colleges? And I go, I don't have a college agent. Right. And I don't have a college agent. So like, I have to like, you know, do a bunch of shows and maybe if my tape is really good. Then I can submit it to people. And then, yeah. And he's at like, a NACA. Well, yeah. Showcase. To do NACA. And he's like, he's like, well, I was in college and you know, you know, people would just like call or whatever, and, and we'd book people to do stand up. Um, he's like, I mean, why don't you just get me like a list? Like a light bulb went off, and I go, and then I was like, oh shit, I see what you're thinking. Yeah. And I went online and I got a, the names and numbers of mm -hmm. every single person that was like running any sort of like club or activities in every single college that was surrounding, like in Illinois and surrounding, like yeah. the state surrounding. And I gave it to my brother. And as just like a fun bit during his little breaks, he would call colleges and pretend to be Your a manager. manager at a company and then pitch me essentially. Yeah. And he'd be like, hey, um, blah, blah, blah. You know, um, I know you guys do activities. Um, I know uh, you guys uh, usually do comedy. Um, have you guys booked that, all of that out? And the, most of them would be like, no, we haven't fully booked it out yet. And he goes, okay, well, you know, I have a lot of big name clients. And he would just like, mm, fucking name, <laughs> fucking big name clients. And then he would be like, I have Bill Engvall. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. Have. <laughs> and then he'll be like, but then he would be like, but you don't want them. They're too expensive. They're too expensive. And if any of them get any sort of thing that conflicts, like a TV thing or something, they're, you know, they're just going to cancel on you. And then he would pitch me as like this, like a used car salesman. But I have this, it's a little bit dented, but this nice Honda Civic. It'll be, run. Yeah, it'll run. He goes, but I have this uh, I have this new guy. He's like super funny. He's young. Um, and he has the same last name as me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know what? Nobody has ever brought that up. Yeah. And 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 so he'd be like, yeah, this new guy, he's young. He's working on his, his, uh, his hour and he's in your area. So he he I can have him come through for like 
instead of like the whatever 1500 or 1000 yeah. he'll come through for like 500 bucks and they'll all be like yeah i did so many colleges yeah in that one thing that through doing all of those um i would take like greyhound buses or like drive this old shitty pickup truck we had <laughs> Um, you and your brother was split it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, actually, he didn't even care. A lot of it was like, we. I, I had this bank account, and I would just put it in there. And I was working at Lens Crafters at the time, and I would pay. I I would, and then he'd be like, it was for him. It was just fun because he already had a job. He was making yeah. money. It was just like, oh, cool. I'm glad I could help you out. It was only until like it's that family thing. It's meant a to fam- trickle down from your uncle and your dad. Dude. Right. It's like everybody's awesome. trying to help everybody. Like. Hey, I noticed that you're trying to do this. Let me try helping you be better at this thing. That's and that's awesome. so important to have. And it's I'm so grateful and lucky that I had that. Otherwise, I would have, you know, spent several more years trying to get to a point where, okay, now I have a tape. Now I'm reaching out to people and blah, blah, blah. Instead of being like doing it where like, I can do it myself. Yeah. Which is how he did it. And he's like, why not? There's nobody telling me that I can't. Yeah. There's no rule. There's no rule like, hey, you have to go to a four-year university to be a manager. No. There's no like, hey, there's a manager's union of America or an agent's union of America. It's like literally anybody, you could be like, hey, I'm managing uh, my daughter's musical career. And no one's ever going to be like, but have you ever done this before? Are you qualified? Is there any sort of like certificate, a questionnaire? Yeah. They go, no. All right. I guess I guess so. He's pretty good on the phone. Yeah. yeah, That's what it is. That's all it is. So I did all those. And then I eventually got a college agent. And then and then me and my brother were doing uh I would pay my brother and but again even then it still didn't even factor to be that much it was only until I moved out to LA um, I started acting a bunch I started I was lucky enough to like I would be doing all these pilots and stuff and none of them ever got picked up but I was doing that and then and then we're like oh okay we're kind of seeing how this figures out and then my brother so cool that you guys were doing it together oh man it was the greatest source of like comfort I think a lot of the reason why I wasn't as like, um, uh, f- like just crippled by anxiety and just paranoia. Because you it's had like, a partner, I could ask him, be yeah. like, "Hey, do they like that?" And he'll be like, "Yeah, they like that, but they wanted to do that." And that little thing of telling me the truth of what the casting person thought is so important Help because most people, yeah, because most agents and managers would never tell you straight up what the customers thought because they think that you're so fragile I that know. if you hear that they're like, yeah, they didn't really like that, you know, they, they felt like you didn't play up the seriousness of that scene as much as you could have. Uh, most, they feel like people would be like, oh, so they think I'm bad? Yeah. They think I'm, I'm the worst. I'm going to jump off a bridge or something like that, you know? Yeah. So that's why they go, you always hear the same thing of like, they, they liked, liked you, you, but they just felt like it wasn't the right. Yeah, of course. You know what I mean? Yeah, I have one agent, though, who's very direct. And he'll just you tell me need direct. It and there are so times where I'm like, all right, dude, dial it back, bro. You You're ne- being way too direct. <laughs> you need it, though. That's the only way we grow. Like, even as stand ups, sure. like, if you couldn't hear the laughter, well, what the hell would we be doing out there? Yeah. Right? There'd be no barometer to tell yep. when they're saying no or yes to a thing. You have no way to adjust to things. Yeah. So that I really valued a lot. And also, like, he was doing he was really expanding in that area and then I was expanding in in in, in the TV and, and film area. But together it was like this great one too of like he would be like we would go out and we were really good at like meeting people and talking to people because I'd be like, Hey I, blah blah blah, you should come out to a show, all this and this is my manager and they'd be like, Oh, it's so cool that you guys are whatever and I would never tell them that he's my brother because I always assumed that people thought we were related. Yeah. And then it would always be a thing where like months, if not years later, people would be like, you're his brother? Yeah. People weren't like, oh, I'll leave. that must be like Johnson. I think so. I think that's yeah. what they thought it was. Yeah. And, and, and so, I mean, this has been going on for like, since I've been in LA, so almost like nine years now. And it's all been like every year has thankfully been like a little bit better than, than, than the previous year. And that's because we have such a tight rapport. And then I would meet people, he would meet people, and we would, uh, uh, he would be like, I think I'm going to rep this guy. And it would always be the same barometer. Like, are they good at what they do? Mm-hmm. But are they like a... You know, we're all a little bit weird, but are they level-headed? Yeah, well, that's Do you know what huge. I mean? Like, of course. Because 
he had worked with some people and he's like i literally can't do this he's like i it's like i'm dating them and he's like i don't want to i don't have time uh, life is too short for me to try you know when Your first of all no one like is he that he's, he's like himself. first of all there's a very small amount of people that are that talented yeah to also be that crazy uh-huh dude i say it all the time yeah. i'm like how is this dude still getting work yeah he lit himself on fire yeah. why are we still putting up with it well at that point it becomes a money thing but if you're all, like on the come up like he was managing people on the come up and he's like you can't be this crazy on the come up you can be crazy after you're making 10 million dollars a year yeah I, I get that for sure don't be this crazy person you can't you're you can't even book a series regular and you're a, you're a psycho yeah I don't want to work with you you're making me hate you yeah I don't want to dread picking up your phone calls because you're gonna go on some sort of weird rant yeah about you know you know oh that, uh, they went with them because of blah 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 and the, just be like take the l and move on you know what i mean <laughs> totally <laughs> so um so the people that he is working with um like my friend prashanth and and jc and other people they're all like very just hey pe- people you can hang out with that are also good at their job and that also helps my brother on his end because he knows that if if you know there's a job that works out they're not going to get a phone call like Hey, this person did this crazy thing. Yeah, you know, because it's all like reputation based. Because there's no, again, there's no degree or certificate. No, of course, and every, that's all we have at the end of the day. Yeah, is our relationship. So people go like, "Oh man, this person's ridiculous." Like they're fine, but I would rather work with someone who's just as talented, but not a crazy person. <laughs> yeah, like they're gonna say, "Jesus, that guy came in with sunglasses, and now they're just regular glasses." <laughs> Like, oh my god i do this bit about my transition lenses now and it's about how um i tried keeping them on uh while i was uh, having sex and and how the reaction is not positive when guys try to keep their glasses on during mm-hmm. sex and then sort of like the end tagline is like so what the windows open these are transitions they might turn into sunglasses <laughs> <laughs> that's tight um what's up with because we got to wrap up here we've been yeah yeah i mean this flu man this flu yeah. what is um okay so let me tell you the stuff going on yeah okay so uh wrecked is done three seasons shout yep. outs to at&t um for ruining that um but that was uh, the best three years of my life that was the greatest shop of all time um i'm most likely going to be recurring on a uh a new show on nbc called indebted i know it yeah, so I might be doing that, and um, I might be doing also recurring on this Netflix show. We don't know. We haven't confirmed that yet. But then I'm doing BoJack Horseman. Oh, killer. The new season of BoJack Horseman. And then um, I'm trying to write um, some stuff. Just like this? Yeah, I'm just trying to fucking just really just uh, just really write hard. And I'm trying to like, I really want to make my own thing. Yeah, of course, dude. Because um, I feel like I, that's where I'm at right now as far as TV is concerned. I really want to make something that like... I, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. of course. I, mean, I always think of stand up. That's a lot of our goal is like, yeah. you know, that's always been my goal is to like make my own thing. And right. Because like, I'm like, all we do is get on stage and give our POV. Don't we want to give that every week? Yeah. yeah. So I'm really excited about doing that. And then, um, what else? What else? What else? I did a couple commercials that are playing right now. Yeah, I mean, those are having, awesome. You kill it on those. I've been having a little nice streak. That leather with jacket that. one is so good. Oh my dude. God. I've gotten so many people. Um, I do a decent amount of commercials, but you never know which one they're actually going to like play a lot. I'm sure. And like, I'm glad it was that one because well, that, that one was the coolest fresh. one. Yeah. yeah. It was so fun and cool because usually the one that gets played is like, I'm just like in the back and I say like one line and then that's it because you all, everybody gets paid the same. In the I commercial. know, that's the best. So I was like, oh, I'm glad it was this one because it's just me. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh, what a cool thing to have uh, playing like, and it's playing during things that I like. Like it's playing during like the NBA playoffs. And I'm like, this is a dream. Yeah, man. This is so cool. People are like, I'm going to go to the bathroom during the commercial. He's like, yeah. I'm not. <laughs> yeah, I'm just having Instagramming the TV. Um, so I'm doing that. And then, I'm, you know, I'm just, um, I'm doing stand-up. Oh, I just want to get your thoughts on this. Yeah. Because um, you've done stand-up everywhere. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you've been on the road a million times. You've, you've been on TV, all that. Have you not done stand-up on TV? I did Adam Devine's house party. That's it. Oh my god, that's crazy! Isn't that crazy? Yeah, yeah. and um, I love that dude. So he's the best. Yeah, and so I wanted to get your take on like if you were going to do a special now. Yeah, where would you put it? Where would I put it? Where would you put it? Well, first of all, I I self produced my last special. Yeah, and I didn't sell it, so I put it on my website and just sold it. Great. So I would be I would 
I would probably, if I was in your shoes, I would go out there and try and get someone to like say that they're going to put the money up so uh-huh. that you don't have to, yeah. or at least gauge the interest so yeah. you know, oh, I could go do this on my own and then flip it, you know, yeah. and license it so I still own it because okay. I like owning my own stuff now. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It's kind of catchy because everyone goes to Netflix for comedy now. Yeah. That's going to burst at some point, you would think. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like at some point. I feel like it's sort of kind of reaching that point. Well, where when they did a special a day every yeah, for the whole year, it's kind of like how much... Com- but comedy is at such a boom right now. Yeah. It's like at the comedy store, every, it's like sold out every single night and the shows are great and people are knowledgeable. They they all know what they're looking for. Yeah. They all want to laugh. They have a frame of reference versus other comedians they like and they're looking to have their minds expanded. Yeah. It's just like... So, I mean, I don't know. What are the, the other options? Comedy Central is going to show it at 12 o'clock on a Friday night. No one's ever going to see it. So, I would, I probably don't. I'm thinking, what do you think about YouTube? Just putting it out there on your own? Why not? I mean, Andrew Schultz did it and it crushed. Yeah. You know, so you're relying on people finding it, whereas Netflix, you know they're going to find it's it. It's going to get pushed in some Not only that, Netflix releases it and it's in like. 40 million households that day on the front page on the front page yeah whereas like you know on youtube people kind of have to find it a little bit yeah Um, but more and more people are using youtube as they're like you know this i don't know i think 200 million or 400 million youtube users so i don't know i'm just saying that it's not as saturated youtube as far as specials high quality special no i mean you know what you have a manager that sounds like he makes great decisions i would ask him okay fair enough fair enough (laughs) Thanks so much, buddy. Of course, man. Thank you so much. This is a blast. (laughs) This is one of my favorite things about comedy is you just meet people from different walks of life with different upbringings, different experiences. And then you do that anywhere, anywhere you work, but in stand up, not only like we're open, we're so open about what we're willing to talk about. And to just hear his upbringing and where he came from and how he got to where he is. And it's so different from where I am in my seat, but it just allows me to like have a different perspective on the world through his eyes because he's willing to share. So uh, I hope you enjoyed my sit down with Asif and please give him a follow on all social media and uh, and check him out if he's going to be performing near you. He's a great dude and uh, I really enjoyed sitting down with him. So uh, thank you guys for tuning in have a great fourth of july gay and uh wherever you're wherever you're watching youtube or facebook or itunes or wherever you listen or watch please subscribe rate it review it and share it with friends is the only way we grow uh appreciate all of you and i'll talk to you next week bye